Uh, here I'm going to make like a map where you just have lines between the different places and you just choose the next point in the in the map that you're allowed to go to and then it moves there basically so i'm going to make a um like one of the nodes that you can stand on basically uh so each of these nodes will have a chip with a load of logic in it so let's group that up and now i can scope in and open the chip and scope out and i can still see the chips uh window and put our logic in there so uh, the way this is going to work, um, I'll just span that out. The way this is going to work is that we have a puppet, just for uh, ease of use. So we'll have a puppet, and we'll use the follow um, functionality. We'll make sure the outer radius is nice and big, so that uh, even if the uh, between the nodes is a bit far, it will still find it and we want it to go to a named tag. So we'll add a tag in here. A tag is just a point in space within the scene, basically. And we can give it a name. So this will be the target. All right. And this will look for the target. So we can go in here and type it in, or we can use up and down on the D-pad and it'll cycle through the names of tags in the scene. Uh, so now if we play time, It'll walk over to it but because the minimum distance is two meters it only has to get to two meters and then it will stop so we actually want it to go onto that platform so let's put it at zero there you go and now it goes straight to that tag uh, so then we'll have another one over here and we'll just uh, draw a line between it so it's clear what's going on cool um, so now we have a tag in there but we also have a tag in there so if you play time it'll actually only ever go to the tag that's closest to it um, so it'll never actually get to that tag because this tag is on but then if we were to turn this tag off it'll find the other tag and now that's the closest one in the scene so it'll go over there so now we want to um, use the puppet's direction be able to change the puppet's direction so that it looks along one of these lines so i'll just uh, copy one of those over here so now when he gets to this node he has two two choices for the player to make uh, now we don't actually want the player to uh, run around with the character so we'll just remove this line which is from left stick to the walk but then we have this other input on the puppet interface, which basically just talks to the puppet and the puppet talks to it with uh, inputs and outputs and stuff. So we can actually use turn to face. So if we go here and use the left stick and wire that into turn to face instead, then if we actually make it remote controllable, and play time, remote controllable means we don't have to um, possess that uh, puppet uh, for it, for us to put in um, inputs. So uh, we'll actually oh, we'll just quickly add a camera. Uh, cool. So now if I push up on the left stick, the puppet is looking up relative to the camera and left and down and right so we can use that to um, try and select which uh, which of these paths we're going to take um, now to choose which path we're going to take we're going to use some more tags uh, so let's add another tag and I'll put it on that path so we know it's uh, directly pointing in that direction and then we'll give this a name. This will be next. So another thing you can do with tags is to use a trigger zone to detect them. So if we add a trigger zone and then we put that onto tags mode and we can use up and down on here to cycle through the tag names again. So now this one's looking for next. And if you watch this here, the tag output, it actually lights up when it gets detected by the zone. 
like that, which means we can use that to trigger some other logic. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll put this trigger zone inside the uh, puppet, and we'll press triangle on here to reset the position of it, and then we'll put it onto, I just used a cube, and make the sides a bit shorter like that, make it a bit longer. And now wherever that puppet is pointing, that zone will point as well. So if we have this open, then we can compare what's going on. When you go into play mode, uh, test mode, and play time, now we're playing the game, but we can see all the gadgets and things like that. So if you push up and then left and so on, it f the zone follows as the puppet moves around. So if we now point in that direction, then this next one is lighting up, um, which is what we want. But then when we're facing over here, that isn't lighting up at all. So then we can use that to trigger what we want to happen next. So let's just add another node, a, another tag over here. And because it has the same name, it will still be detected by the same uh, trigger zone. But then um, we want this to uh, activate things but we don't want it to happen all the time just for testing i'll make this glow with a keyframe and then use that output to turn that on so now if i look in that direction then that's glowing to let me know that that's the next uh, location i'm uh, going to go to and then if I add one for the other one. So say I'm looking down here. Uh, if I uh, try and look up there, it's going to go past this one. So we don't want that to activate and move to that point um, just all the time. So we only want that trigger zone to be on at certain times. For example, as a simple example, let's just use X. So we aren't not really jumping around. So let's remove that wire. And we can just use that to power the trigger zone now so if I if I now look around it's not um, making those pads glow but then when I press X then it does so uh, to actually activate things what we want to happen is for this t tag to turn on and that tag to turn off so for that to happen let's add a selector um, a selector has multiple different channels like this and only one of them is active and lit like that and sending a signal at any given time and you can tell it um, to be on different channels in different ways so um, it always defaults to A so let's leave uh, A blank because we don't want to do anything when by default but then when we, we trigger a B we will power the tag so the tag won't be powered until we're on mode B so if we take another um, wire from there and wire that straight into B uh, then we can turn we'll just pin that to the screen and use play mode to have a look at what's going on so I look over there and then I press X and that's changed it to the B channel and now that's powering the uh, target tag but then we want to turn this one off so let's do a similar thing over here so have a selector only on B is it powered and then when this is uh, when this is uh, detected by the trigger zone then we set it to A because we want to turn this one off um, but by default we want to uh, turn it on so as a quick way of doing that we'll just have a key a timeline And I'm using L1 and right to uh, expand out the timeline width phase. So then we can get a look at smaller time frames uh, more easily. And then I'll use a switch in here and wire that into B. So now when, when uh, the scene starts, it will play this timeline and it will send a signal into B, which turns makes that the active mode and turns on the target. Uh, so you can just make that short like that. So if I play time, 
it plays through and sets it to B. And now if I go back into play mode and I press X, then it turned on that one and turned off that one uh, as expected. And then it walked to the next one. So then this this side would have tags going to this area. So I'll just add those. So let's try that. So I'll look in this direction and tap X and I've moved over there. And then I'll look back over here and tap X and we're going back over there. Uh, now there is one uh, bug that uh, we should probably take care of. So if I look over here and hold X, then when I get to this point, um, that tag is detected again. So if I look at what's going on in test mode, So look over there and keep holding X and then the next tag gets turned on because the trigger zone hits it because we're still holding X. So what we really want to do is um, when we start holding X, do the thing and then stop doing the thing until we start holding X again. So if I go here, uh, use a signal manipulator and wire X into it, we can use the pulse mode, which means um, as you can see on the face there, uh, on the right hand side is kind of the output. So if I, uh, each time I press X, it just goes on for a, a moment and turns off. And that's what we want. So we use that to trigger the zone. And now we can play test to see if that's working. So I look over here and hold X and it doesn't activate the next one because I haven't let go of X and to hold it again. So the trigger zone just stays off. Um, another thing we probably want to do is uh, this still doesn't stop us from activating that second uh, tag. So if we look at that uh, in playtest mode, um, if I keep tapping X, then it will keep on activating these different um, different tags. So I tap X. Oh, I lined up, there we go. And then I tap X before I get to the next one and it's already changed to the previous one again, which isn't what we want to do. Ideally what we want to do is uh, when we're on this, then we're allowed to trigger the next area. So if we give this a label, let's call it scenery. Then we can use another trigger zone and we'll use, make it just a sphere and put it at the feet like that and have it look for the label. Uh, we can delete this because uh, because that object there isn't called anything. And then go to the labels and have it detect only the scenery label. So it ignores everything else and you can see it flashing there. That means this trigger zone can detect that. So uh, so now if we start holding X, let's just make this window bigger. If we start holding X and, so it's using AND gate, start holding X and we're in the right place, then we'll power that trigger zone. Uh, we need to uh, name this with the same label. So that's scenery as well. So let's look in that direction and tap, keep tapping X. And then look in this direction. And then keep tapping X. And it only does it once. And it doesn't try and go back and forth again. I'd like to thank WoodSense, Shadow of Callus, Mozilla TDK, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.